Okay, let's look at more applications of differentiation. And this particular section, we will take a look at the Rose theorem and the mean value theorem. Objective is we learn to understand and use the Rose theorem. Understand, use the mean value theorem. The first one is take a look at Rose theorem. Rose theorem was um, named after the French mathematician Michael Rowe. And uh, actually, Rose theorem renders the existence of an extreme value in a closed interval. Let's take a look at the theorem itself. So the F B continues on a closed interval, square bracket a comma b, and differentiable on an open interval a comma b. If f of a equals f of b, then there is at least one number c in a b that is such as such that f prime of c equals zero, meaning we're looking at the horizontal tangent line. This is important. Difference continues on a closed interval, differentiable on an open interval, and also the three conditions continues on closed interval. Second one, differentiable. On open interval AB. And the third thing is f of a equals f of b. And if these three conditions are satisfied, we guarantee there's a horizontal tangent line within the interval. Okay. So from the rules theorem, you can see that if a function f is continuous on closing the a b, differentiable on closing the a comma b, and if f of a equals f of b, there must be at least one x value between a and b at which the graph of f has horizontal tangent right here. This is where the horizontal tangent occurs. f of a equals f of both of equals f of b equals to d. d is a constant. If you look at it, it continues everywhere. It's differentiable everywhere within the interval. So that's why we know that um, that's horizontal tension occurs. And the horizontal tension actually is is the relative maximum in this case, right? It's because it's concave downward. And also there's another I could give you another example. You can see another if it's concave upward. Let's say this is Let's say this is A, and that's B. I hope I will be both. This is D. Okay. So as you can see, it still continues everywhere. Continues on closed interval AB, differentiable on open interval AB. 
and f of a equals f of b equals lowercase d. And we know that must have a horizontal tangent here. So with that's a horizontal tangent occurring here. And this is horizontal tangent. Which is the relative minima in this case. So if we take off the differentiability requirement from Rose theorem, then F will still have a critical number in the open interval A comma B, but it may not yield a horizontal tangent. In this case, this is the case when we have a cusp. This cusp. This is a typical cusp, and the slope of tangent that does not occur at that point, right? Slope of tangent line does not exist. Okay. Uh, but still, we, we have a right in maximum here. Okay. Even though there's no horizontal tangent, but uh, we have a right in maximum. Okay. So let's take a look at an example, right? Illustrating Rose theorem, find the two intercepts of f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. So this is a second degree polynomial function. We call that quadratic equation. And it's continuous everywhere. It's differentiable everywhere. So we satisfy first and second conditions. Differentiable continuous. And we just gotta check f of a equals f of b. Okay, so and show that a prime of x equals zero at some point between the two intercepts. So first of all, we got to figure out the intercept. So setting f of x equals zero, that means x squared minus three x plus two equals zero. Then we factor this using quadratic factoring. We get x minus two parentheses times x minus one parentheses. The next step is setting x minus two equals zero, x minus one equals zero. Then adding two from both side equation cancel x equals two. Adding one from both side equation x equals two. So the two intercepts are one two. So basically, let's see what is f of one. This is f of a. Let's see if they if it is equals to f of two. F1 equals 1 square minus 3 times 1 plus 2 equals 0, right? F2 equals 2, 2 square minus 3 times 2 plus 2, which is also equal to 0. That means F1 equals F2. And the third condition is verified. Second condition is differentiable. In open interval one two. First condition is continuous in the closing interval one two. So now all three conditions satisfy, right? So we can say that Rose theorem apply here. So there must be a horizontal tangent. So in order to find horizontal tangent, we gotta find out horizontal tangent. We take the derivative. 
f of x a prime of x equals to 2x minus 3. Then if you set that equal to 0, then you find the horizontal tangent. So 2x minus 3 equals 0, and so for x, adding 3 from both sides of the equation, 2x equals 3, divide 2 from both sides of the equation, x equals 3 over 2. So this is only when um, horizontal occurs. So and then three over two belong to this interval, right? It's right, it's right in the middle of the interval. That means um, Rho's theorem applies here, and then that's horizontal tangent. And it's, since this is second degree polynomial, it's concave upward. So. Uh, concave upward, so we have a relative have a minimum here, right? Minimum occurs at x equals 3 over 2. Okay, uh, you can take a look at the detailed solutions from your PowerPoint. Now, I'm going to show you the graph. This is how after we graph f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. And uh, 1, 0, and 2, 0 are symmetric by the symmetry line, right? And, uh, and we see a horizontal tangent occurs here. And that yields the, the minimum. In this case, it's global. It's a uh, minimum. All right, it's it's a global minimum for the whole function. Okay. The next thing, let's take a look at the mean value theorem. And also, people usually write abbreviated as m.v.t. Okay. And those theorem could be used to prove another theorem, which is mean value theorem. Um, if f of is continuous on a closed interval a comma b and differentiable on an open interval a comma b, so there exists a number c in a comma b such that f prime of c equals to f b minus f a over b minus a. Okay, so the slope of tangent line, right? This is slope of tangent line equals to slope of second line. At x equals c. That's how you interpret this. So also three two conditions got to satisfy continuous on closed interval a b a comma b. Second one differentiable. On the open interval. Maybe and our prime of C equals F B minus F A over B minus A. Okay. Let's use the the mean value theorem to find a uh, finding a tangent line. So given that f of x equals to five minus four over x Final values of c in the open interval one comma c one comma four, such that f prime of c equals f four minus f one over four minus one. So in order to solve for this, right, we gotta find a derivative f prime of x. So derivative of five is zero. Derivative, uh, we gotta just gotta find out what is derivative of four of x. Okay. So in this case, we gotta use the the quotient rule, right? F of g is a prime of g minus f g prime of g squared. So let's take a look at the derivative of um, four of x. Put negative sign in front. F is four, so a prime is zero. G is x, so g prime is equals to one. I'm just apply the 
the quotient of f prime, which is zero times g, which is x minus f, which is four times g prime, which is one, over g square, which is x square. So now, as you can see, f prime of x becomes this is zero. Negative negative four becomes four over x squared. Okay, so that's our derivative, uh, and then just basically next day I find out what is f of four minus f of one. F of four equals five minus four over four, which is five minus one gives us four. F of one equals to five minus four over one, which is five minus four, which is one. So f of four minus f1 over 4 minus 1 give us 4 minus 1 over 4 minus 1 give us 1 and the very last step is just get a so this is the right hand side right this side now prime of c equals 4 over x squared set that equals to 1 then we end up with x squared equals to 4 we cross multiplying so in that case x equals plus minus 2 so that means, however, we're going to take out the only thing satisfied will be x equals 2, right? This is the only number within the interval 1, 4, right? So x equals 2 is the correct answer. And the same thing as same thing as c equals 2. You can take a look at detailed solutions. I just want to show you the, the graph. When you graph it, it looks like this. So the tangent line, the slope of tangent line, it's right here, right? This is the slope. Equals slope of secant line passing through these two points. And this is the essence of the mean value theorem. M comma V comma T. The tangent line at the two three is parallel to the second line through one one and four four. Right, the slope equal to each other when they are parallel. So slope equal to other each other. Slope e of tangent line. At x equals two, equals to slope of tangent line, slope of second line passing through. One one and four four, as indicated from the graph, right? That's pretty much it.